When I started to make um, so-called pop films, it was in fact as an invitation by Andrew Olden to make the film Charlie Is My Darling. Um, after making that, he asked me to do a number of promotional films, and I went on then to do them for um, Top of the Pops. Andrew Oldham, manager of the Rolling Stones, I think was probably one of the first to see that if I could make a little film for Top of the Pops, then that little film could be sent around the world. I had met Sid Barrett on many occasions long before he formed Pink Floyd and went up to London. We were both at the time living in Cambridge. I was a postgraduate student who'd taken up painting. He was a painter who painted, I left Cambridge and went up to the Slade where I started to make films. And it was about two years later when I was had launched into this film called Tonight Let's All Make Love in London when um, I went along to see them at UFO. Um, of course, remembering that um, it was Sid and his pals who used to rehearse outside my door and keep me awake at night. Went along a couple of times. In fact, I then got um, friendly with um, a girl called Jenny um, Spears, who was pretty close to Sid at the time, too. And um, she, I think it was more than anybody, um, saw some of my film and said, wouldn't, the Sid, wouldn't Sid's music be ideal for it? And I agreed entirely. Um, and went back to see Sid and said, listen, you guys, um, I'm making this film. I like your music. I've done some filming at UFO. And um, why don't I take you into a studio and record, I'd like to record um, Interstellar Overdrive and maybe something else. I'll book a studio for three hours and you can come in and I'll record some music and I'll use it for my film. While they were recording it, I filmed it. This was obviously assuming I might use a little bit in my film. They then did another track, which was an improvisation, which they then decided to call Nick's Boogie. And I came out with a load of tapes and uh, signed a contract to use um, the material in my film. They were delighted to get the promotion. I ended up using the music I wanted over a lot of images that I'd shot at UFO. And I used it again at the end of the film um, over the sequences I'd shot later, I don't know, a year later, probably, at the 14-hour Technicolor Dream. I thought the music was absolutely perfect because my film was not intended to be a pop film, even though I called it pop concerto for film eventually. I wasn't interested in the, 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 the sort of light-hearted side of pop music. I was much more interested in the darker shadow side of, that the Stones represented, obviously, in comparison, for example, to the Beatles, and which, for me, um, Pink Floyd were perfect. They had this sort of discontinuous, free-flowing jazz kind of style mixed with quite a lot of sort of classical feeling and, most of all, that sense of dislocation of consciousness, the sort of druggy thing that was at that time obviously not just a fashion but the beginning of the whole counterculture.